Atomization is something that every League player has to go through. It's complicated. Knowing what to build and when to build it is difficult when there are so many different champions, matchups, and situations. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can better optimize some of your itemization and general rules that can help you with your itemization. It's time to level up. Let's start with the basics of footwear. A common trap that people fall into is tabbies are good against AD champions and mercury treads are good against AP champions. While this is often true, a lot of the value in these boots comes from their additional passives. For ninja tabbies, the passive that reduces damage from basic attacks make it a really strong item against champions that naturally rely on auto attacking or champions with basic attack modifiers. This makes it a great rush when playing into certain AD matchups as showcased by Alfari. When playing against the Quinn, a ranged basic attack harasser, he prioritized early ninja tabby to mitigate some of that harassment. As mentioned, this is also the case for champions with basic attack modifiers. Corky is a champion whose basic autos do 80% magic damage and 20% AD damage. However, this damage is still reduced by Ninja Tabby's passive. This also applies to things like Yasuo's Q, Renekton's W, and Kale's auto attacks. Conversely, a big part of Mercury Tread's value comes from its tenacity, which reduces the duration of crowd control effects. When laning against champions such as Syndra and Zoe, Mercury Treads can be especially strong as they can help reduce their potent crowd control while granting defensive stats to limit the chances of getting bursted. However, from upgrading a Null Magic Mantle to Mercury Treads gives no additional magic resistance. So in scenarios where you only need the magic resistance but not the tenacity, it can be better to sit on tier 1 boots and prioritize their other itemization. With that said, sometimes the value of both defensive stats and movement speed can be reason enough for an early upgrade. This is especially true for melee champions that rely on movement speed to be able to close the gap and dodge skill shots. Arome demonstrates this when playing Renekton against a Mordekaiser, where the additional tenacity is less valuable than the bonus movement speed along with the magic resistance against an AP top laner. Continuing on with the theme of AP, there's often a debate around whether you should stack AP or instead invest in magic penetration. There are multiple factors that can affect this decision. The first consideration to make is what are your champion's base damages and your ability power ratios. The second is the amount of magic resistance on the enemy team, as well as how accessible are the targets you want to damage. Lastly, there's secondary scalings, meaning whether your champion has other AP scalings besides damage, such as heals or shields. Let's start with the first factor. Elise is a great example of a champion with high base damage values, but poor scaling. This means that stacking high AP items on her will be less valuable than other items. Void Staff, Oblivion Orb into Morella Nomicon, Zonya's Hourglass, and Leandri's Torment are all great AP items that focus more on their additional effects rather than just building as much AP as possible. On the other hand, Syndra is a champion that has very high AP ratios across the board and whose role revolves around dealing as much damage as possible and bursting targets. Syndra's full damage combo exceeds 200% AP, so she naturally favors Death Cap more than Elise. However, magic resistance is an effective tool at minimizing a champion's overall damage. In a match where opponents are itemizing for resistances, this can lead towards shifting the build towards prioritizing a Void Staff, which provides percentage magic penetration. Notice in this clip that Larson prioritizes a Void Staff over a Death Cap early because of the high magic resistance frontline that he has to break through. However, this can be a very different story for a more mobile champion like LeBlanc, who can more easily reach the backline and unload a combo on squishier targets. Lastly, it's worth talking about secondary scalings. For this, let's look at Karma. Karma is a champion that offers both poke and utility. This utility, in the form of a shield and self-healing, are considered secondary scaling effects as they also gain the benefits of high AP values. In the case of Karma, even if the enemy is stacking magic resistance, sometimes it is more valuable to keep stacking AP, because having stronger shields could be more valuable than doing more damage. Vladimir is another great example of a champion with strong secondary scaling. Passively, Vladimir gains HP relative to the amount of AP that he has. This means that sometimes, prioritizing stacking AP can be more valuable as you get more value overall from it. That concludes this first iteration on itemization. I hope you've gained enough experience to level up. If you didn't, be sure to check out the last level up episode to get you over the edge. If you found this video on itemization useful, please let us know in the comments below. It's great to hear your feedback. For more insight on how to improve your gameplay, be sure to tune into the LEC every Friday and Saturday. Until next time.